Teamless Tuesdays Live, brought to you by LGB Marine, the marine construction and services specialists. Battlers, we are back for another edition of the smash hit, absolute smash hit show, Team List Tuesdays. Tonight, we will be breaking down and reviewing our upcoming clash against the New Zealand Warriors in this monster, monster show that we have in store for you. We'll be taking a look at our key matchups, the ever popular lock it in segment. So start getting those locked and ready to go, Battlers. Uh, we'll be taking also a look at our pathway systems and their upcoming clashes this week. Also, as always, we will be answering your burning, burning questions. I'm sure you've got plenty of them ready to go as well. So, Battlers, sit back and get comfy as we take a look at the Adam O'Brien's and outs of our round four clash against the Warriors. Let's go. Welcome to the Knighted Podcast with your hosts, Lincoln Ison, Sean Lazenby, and Matt Storky Stork. Boys, 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 how we doing? Good, mate. Doing good? All right, yeah, it's Tuesday. I say it every week. I say it every Tuesday. It's the start of the rugby league week. It doesn't get any better. It truly is. It truly is. Boy, mm. it comes around quick. It really does come around quick, doesn't it? Does. it? Yeah. Does. Storky, how are we doing, mate? You're back back with us again. I know. I'm back for the Tuesday here, yeah, mate. I'm not doing too bad. Um, yeah, still on holidays. So, actually, funny little thing. Um, our puppy at the moment, as we speak, is graduating from puppy school. So, it's a bit oh. of a strange one, the old uh, puppy school, isn't it? It's kind of like trying how to learn how to drive a helicopter in four weeks and still, you know, nearly not hitting mountains, but they just give you a graduation. Hey, you've done it. And that's a bit of a strange that, one, but um, yeah. What's that like obedience training? Yeah, we didn't do it with our other um, our other dog, but um, the wife wanted to do it with this dog just to, you know, to teach him to sit and, you know, it's, you know, like stay and all like, all the, you know, standard things. But yeah, it's only a four week course. So I don't think you're expecting to, you know, have Lassie or something after four weeks, but um. She is doing well, but yeah, she graduates tonight. So yeah, I'm expecting big things. Party, yeah, party at the Storky House. Yeah. There we go. Proud, mm. proud, proud moment in the Storky House. Yeah. Mate. mate, straight to the pool room. But no, I'm being good, brother. Being good. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Well, um, first things first, Storky. I believe you got one for us this week, pal. First things first, mate. It's been a good. Um, it's always good to see the boys get out into the community. And you saw, um, you probably saw it on the night socials. You saw um, one of the SAF boys, uh, Brayley and Lucas, all get out to the Hunter Children's Hospital and get out there and see the kids out there, which is always awesome to see. Um, I know they do it a fair bit, and um, they're doing it on the back of the jerseys over in New Zealand um, this week. They're actually instead of having Palmer Bet, they're going to have the Hunter Children's Hospital on the back of the jerseys, which is really cool. So yeah. there you go. It's um, perfect timing actually, because we're not allowed to advertise Australian betting agencies in New Zealand. So oh, yeah. Bet has yeah. to come off. So yeah. It's, Interesting, it's little things well. like that. Mm. Interesting little yeah. things like that. Yeah. Like Sonny Bill Williams that time where he wouldn't, when he came back for the roosters and wouldn't have, um, some betting agency on his back, so he had a different sponsor than everybody else. What does yeah. what does Manly do? Because they're like major sponsors, points bet. So what? Yeah, are... wasn't there something with their stadium? weren't they like going to change the laws here and they had points bet stadium and there was a big uproar? You remember that a couple of years ago? Wasn't there talk of us having the same thing? And they're like, well, that's like well, Penrith's our... Blue Bet Stadium, isn't it? Yeah, do, we don't have a betting sponsor anymore, do we? Do we? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we got Palmer Bet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got Palmer Bet too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. It's on there. Yeah, For the mm. time, man. yeah. Man, yeah. So remember, remember, remember when um, we used to have like Winfield Cup and everything was like sponsored by like cigarette companies and stuff, and Marlboro yes. was huge, like in the sports and that. Mm. Yeah, crazy times. Yeah, good old days. Good old days. Well, 
We're not here to talk about the uh, the good old days. We're here to to take a look at some nighted news, boys. So let's jump straight into it. Let's take a look at this week's nighted news show. The old remix edition just then. How good oh, is that? <laughs> remix. Jesus. That was a skit, um, mix. skit mix 2024, Battlers. All right. Well, this week's Night of News Battlers. Um, yeah, this one's dividing, dividing fan bases. This one. Um, Leo mm. Thompson, boys, we've uh, gone in with an early guilty plea. He was slapped with a dangerous, dangerous contact charge um, with, a, with some contact with. Storm fullback Ryan Puppenhausen, as you can, all the viewers that are tuning at the moment can see, uh, provided down below. Um, so yes, the club opting not to fight the charge to get the one match ban. So he will unfortunately be omitted from this week's team list. How are we feeling about this one, guys? Because there is varying opinions. You're either on one side or the other. There's no fence sitting on this. So, well, I can tell you that. I've gone from one side of the fence to the other because I was staunch that this should be play on, um, you know, on the rest of it. But look, I don't know. I've I've come to think, what if it was Ponga? What if it was Ponga? And and I've come across some interesting footage. Would you like me to show you what I've come across? Uh, pretty much today. I came across this today, and I'm going to play it for everyone. The the battlers that will listen to it via Spotify will hear it, and the people watching at home will get to see it and hear it. But here it is. This is um about the rule change and just a bit about it. Let, let's have a look. Mid-air tackles. Now, this is something that created a bit of controversy last year. Uh, there was one particular incident where a player fielded a ball in mid-air, but it wasn't uh, on the full, it was from a bouncing ball. So let's just review the rule firstly. A player attempting to field a kick on the full in mid-air cannot be tackled. That's no, that's no change, that's the same rule uh, that will be in place in 2024. A player attempting uh, to field a kick other than on the full, in other words a bouncing kick, can be tackled mid-air, that's unchanged as well, so the player can be tackled. However, the catcher must not be placed in a dangerous or vulnerable position, either intentionally or accidentally. So uh, in this particular case, which uh, many people will remember because it was quite high profile at the time, uh, let's have a look at what happened. So it kicks charged down, the ball bounces and bounces up in the air. Um, a player from the kicker's team attempts to regather it and one of the defenders makes contact with that player while he's in mid-air. So let's just look at this. This is quite a good angle. So the ball's kicked. It's charged down. It's directly into the ground. So it's gone from the charge down straight into the ground. So it's not a kick on the full. Bounces in the air. Support player from the kicking team jumps high to retrieve it. And uh, he is tackled whilst he's in mid-air. But he does land very awkwardly. Uh, with the potential for injury. So in that scenario, the, the different application that will apply uh, in 2024 is if the referee believes that that is a dangerous outcome, uh, they can award a penalty for that. Doesn't change the rule, just uh, extends the, uh, the ability for the referee to determine it as a dangerous tackle. So deliberate so or accidental? So I, I know that's, you know, that's talking about bouncing ball, et cetera, but they are also talking about kicks in general. So catching a kick on the full in regards to the ref can sit there and say, look, as much as he had eyes on the ball, it was a contest. He has put Pappenhausen in a dangerous position. There is a duty of care there to, at the end of the day, they're in employees so i i i guess they have to look after the player if this was ponga if if you reverse the roles and it was kalen ponga that was receiving the ball and one of their players was coming charging through every single one of us would be sitting here saying he needs to be suspended he should have been sent off our tune would be very different and 
I was staunch the other way. I was very much like you, Lincoln, um, saying that, no, it should have been play on, shouldn't have even been a penalty, but it's a penalty because the ref has deemed it that he's been put in a dangerous situation no matter what the rule is. The refs can now come in and go, well, there's no rule for that play that's just happened, but I see it as dangerous. And I don't know, at the end of the day, you you, you kind of just have to go, yeah, okay, I, I accept that. But, yes, it is a contact sport. I get well, that. Well, uh, Your Honour, objection. I... Mm. I don't buy that argument at all. And I'm glad we sit on very different sides of fence. I don't – here we go. I'm going to read battlers. All right. this Sean's the prosecution tonight. I'm going to be the defense. I'm in Leo's corner on this one, right? Dangerous contact. This is what constitutes dangerous contact, which was the charge he was um, charged with. The offense of dangerous contact is constituted by carelessly, recklessly, or intentionally making dangerous contact with an opposing player to be regarded as dangerous for the purposes of the offence, the conduct must have involved unacceptable risk of injury to the opposing player. And the players have a duty of care to avoid such contact. Now, Mm. how on earth do you expect in this scenario ever a 100 plus kilo prop forward to ever contest a ball if 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 he's trying to keep an eye on another bloke who may or may not jump for the ball and also catch the ball, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I think you're completely oh, yeah, you're, com- yes. you're completely ruling out the contest. Yes and it- no, because any any footballer, whether it's a park footballer, someone playing rep or someone playing top level football, if you're chasing a kick, you're usually doing this, right? You're usually like ball player, ball player, ball player. You're you're watching both. I guarantee you nine out of ten players are doing this while they're running at the ball. Leo did not once look at the player catching the ball. That's careless. That's when the careless side comes into it. So that's what the charge is for. The charge is for it being careless on Leo's part that he never looked at the player catching the ball and couldn't stop. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he ran through him. I think if I'd understand if Leo had eyes on the ball the whole time, and perhaps if he just completely ran through him, maybe, maybe. I'm not, I'm not even then. I'm not even confident. I would still agree with it. That didn't happen. Did he stop on a dime? No. They were both traveling towards one another. I just think this opens up a fucking massive can of worms when you've got the attacking player that's running, who's more times than not probably not going to be able to jump compared to the, 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 the defending player who's going to make a massive leap for the ball. I'll put the shoe on the other foot. It could have quite easily been a scenario where if what, what if Pappy's knee had copped Leo in the jaw? Leo's got a broken jaw or a HIA. Does the same rule apply? No, it doesn't. So why because does that not apply? Because Pappenhausen's in the air. He, yeah, see, I, I think unless that's... unless Pappenhausen moves and does a, a bloody kung fu move and puts his knee in a dangerous situation like a Billy Slater did, unless he does something like that, that's on the player running in. Yeah, that player has ran in. It's you, you, you've you've got to you've got to take away the you got to take away the spectator. You've got to take away the looking from the outside and put yourself in the shoes. What Leo Thompson should have done is realised he was never going to get near the ball. He's never going to outrun, outjump Pappenhausen. He should have slowed up his run, waited for him to hit the ground and just put on a huge hit. That's what a front rower should be doing. Front rower shouldn't be contesting with a Pappenhausen. He was wrong in the Well, fir- you're, never, you're never going to get him contest now. No. Good. Yeah, I don't like that. Good. I don't like it all. I think it's a contact sport. Every it, it's all bets are off. It's a con- accidents happen. It's never going to be a safe sport. And yeah, if you're if you're if you're, you're going to jump in the air to go take a catch, and l- let's be honest, nine times out of ten, nothing horrible does happen. Occasionally, this shit is going to happen, and I mm. just and and the reason I say this too is in in the Warriors uh, Raiders game, right? And and the precedent was set with this the same the same Incident, like it's not like for like, but the same incident happened where Jordan Rapana takes out Chanel Harris-DeVita. They're penalised. 
The Raiders go on to do a cap. Uh, sorry, the, the it goes on to be a captain's challenge, and the bunker overruled it. There was no yeah, penalty. Can you tell me if Rapana had eyes for both the ball and the player? Because that completely changes it. Yeah, I just, I, I just think there's muddies. I don't get it. I think it's, a, oh, it's, it's a tough right. rugby league sport. Like you want these contests. I have no problem. With yeah, but it wasn't hundred... a contest. Of course, it was. It wasn't. You got one player that was what two and a half meters in the air, and a player that never left the ground. How the fuck is that a contest? Was Leo ever in contention for the ball? Of course, he was. No, was he a... wasn't. It's only two. There was only two players that were going to get that ball. Ryan Pappenhausen. Pappenhausen was Michael Jordan, and Leo Thompson was fucking the dwarf of Game of Thrones. I there guarantee, was no contention. I guarantee you, if Ryan Pappenhausen is nowhere near that ball, and Leo's no, and, and and Leo's not charging onto it, AOB would be absolutely fucking grilling that team to go. Why wasn't there someone pushing on that ball? Guarantee it. Those boys would be. Doing everything you, remember, you, remember the, you remember that video that went viral on ours? It's now up near one and a half million views. Wilson DeCourcy's massive hit in mm. SG Ball. You know why that was really good and what Leo did was bad? What? The defender, Wilson, Leo, had eyes for the ball and the player. He then realized, I'm not going to get to the ball first. Leo was never going to get to the ball first. Slow his run down, time it, and put on a massive hit. That's what Leo should have done. Leo was careless at the end well, that, of the that's day. Pro- that's probably more dangerous. Careless. That's no. probably more dangerous. The guy you got an eighty kilo guy who's going to land and catch the ball and just get a hundred and ten kilo prop just absolutely flatten him. So, so now, now your argument, your argument now is, I would rather see a player get hit around the knee and the ankle and get flipped because at the end of the day, it was flipped over his head. He did enough to roll onto his back than a rugby league tackle. You would rather see a player hit in midair than a tackle. That's the that, reason. That is, now, that is, that is now your it's defense. A, it's called a contest. Contest doesn't mean you inherently get the ball because you jumped higher. It's a contest. If, if, There's two if, players that no, have every right no, to no, 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 no. A contest is you and I standing there both jumping for the ball. That is a contest. Me, not- me staying foot, me staying put on the ground and just looking up at the ball isn't a contest. I'm not contesting with you then. So then that means that any player that isn't six foot should never go up against a player that's six foot six. It'll never happen. Exactly to right. I don't agree with that. Would, you do would, everything, everything you physically can to get to a point where you give yourself an opportunity. You're robbing boxer, an opportunity. Would you see a boxing match where one guy has a two-foot reach advantage over the other? Well, would you see that? Because that's the exact same thing. It's, it's at the end of the day, Leo was doing something. He did it wrong. He should have slowed himself down and put on a fucking massive hit. He is not going to be able to contest the ball with Pappenhausen. Well, I think we just have to agree to disagree on this one. I well, think mate, I'm disappointed I didn't. I'm just disappointed <laughs> I didn't bring popcorn. Well, he's like, oh my God, my parents are getting divorced. I'm like, where the crap is, where the crap is this popcorn I ordered? But, um, mate, I think at the end of the day, just to finish it up, it does say, you know, in that video, you know, whether it's deliberate or accidental, if there's chance of injury. And in that incident, there, you know, there was um, being accidental, you know, there still was that chance of injury. So it was like, if it what if we're not playing a contact sport, rugby league manslaughter type of thing, you, you might not have meant what, to do it, but it was still dangerous. You know what makes this situation extremely different? If Leo had left the ground, if Leo had left the ground, then I agree it is a contest. Contest, he's contesting the ball. That's the only thing for me that would have to change. Leo jumps for the ball. You got two guys coming in like this. That's fair game. By the way, Battlers, hashtag Team Sean, hashtag Team Link. In all of this, yeah. did Paps end up losing the ball or did he actually hold on to the ball when he fell? Because I ask you, you this question. I ask I, you this I question. <laughs> exactly. So I, I, yeah. I ask you this question, Link, and this is fucking controversial and, and I don't give a fuck anymore, right? <laughs> the gloves are off. I love it. Let's say Leo hits him. 
Pappenhausen comes down, lands on his head, and he's paralyzed for the rest of his life. Oh, my God. Jesus. What is the difference between the position he put himself in and the position Alex McKinnon put himself in? Because at the end of the day, Alex ducked. We all know it. Whether or we, whether we want to publicly admit that is a different story. But what at the end of the day if Pappenhausen is paralyzed? Well, f- fuck me. Um, that's that's the duty. Opinion. That's the duty of care that they're trying to say. Look, we have to give you a one, two week ex- uh, suspension to set a precedent. Now is where we set an example. As long as they follow it on, that's going to be. There. As, as long as that doesn't say, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any consistency with this at all. That yeah, if there was consistency and it was just a shit part, a shit rule I didn't like. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I but see. Well, put it this way. Put it this way. There was, is if that was Ponga, if that was Ponga, and he's in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, this conversation's not happening. Oh. Guarantee it. But look, all all I can say is is I believe, I believe it's a contest. I think Leo didn't do anything wrong. I don't think he, there was any intent. I, I don't believe it was careless. I I don't think he has a duty of care to know what the fuck the other guy's going to do. He's got eyes on the ball. All he had to do was have a look at the. Fullback. Then he's not going to catch the ball. All he can, every single player, like I said, nine out of ten. Leo was just that one that didn't. Is chasing after the ball, going ball player, ball player, ball player. It's like when you're driving a car and you're sitting there and you're driving and you're like looking your vision mirror every 10, 12 seconds, whatever it is. It's the same thing. You're t- you're paying attention to both. Leo never did. Leo's that person that's jumped in his car, put his car in reverse and backed into someone without looking and he's now trying to say what it was I meant to do. That's Leo. Okay. Well, Wait, Leo's, that, Le- the show. Leo's, <laughs> Leo's that person on um, that Family Guy episode where they go to change lanes and they're like, I'm not going to indicate now. Everybody, good luck. That's Leo. <laughs> Our group chat's going to be, um, I'm just going to be laying in bed tonight hearing ding, 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 ding. These bastards are still going It's good, it. though. It's good. <laughs> I, I like the fact you've got varying opinions. We both sit no, on very different good. sides of the fence. So, yeah, my, mine comes from ex playing days and sympathizing with what if that was us? What if he was in a wheelchair? I, under, I understand the sport side of it, I understand the contact sport and don't be a pussy and all this stuff. I, understand that but at the end of the day the rugby the the nrl has to have duty of care of its employees simple as that let's have a look at some of few of the battlers comments but before that it's funny it's ironic if um perhaps comes down with the ball in the afl that's a highlight like yeah exactly uh, yeah. yeah so it's funny for the different sports but um okay let's have a look justin um is going to weigh in here justin has said where's the duty of care from the player who chose to jump that high the duty of care goes both ways from the players so that's just his opinion on it yeah yes 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 and no to that one because if you like i said we go back to this video of wilson putting on this big hit in sg ball the first thing you're taught as a fullback is if you want to avoid a hit you jump if you don't want to get tackled jump he jumped and was still put on his head. So, no, the, okay, well, you are meant to jump. That's the well, first thing they teach you at fullback. We'll move on. Jamie Warner has said, so we aren't meant to attack for the ball. Ponga or not, I'd rather my team attack for the ball. If the player wants to jump, that's on them. So that's um, Jamie's opinion on it. Let's move on to Cameron. Um, the second rule basically states that you can't tackle mid-air. I think it's pretty simple. You just can't do it as much as it sucks. It's dangerous. So, and we'll take one more and then we'll move on. Um, uh, Lachlan here has got, I'm not against it being a penalty in terms of duty of care being exercised by players, but the automatic one week suspension is harsh, especially as Leo has a clean record. But I think that was more because he. You know, I'm more than happy in that scenario. If if you do want to charge a guy, fine. Find the but guy. He played guilty it. for it. That's the why fact, he got the one the week. Fact so the fact the guy could. Even... The fact the guy could miss two weeks over that is fucking ridiculous. I it's think ridiculous. the the biggest story here is the fact that he didn't charge, he didn't fight it. Why not go and put your case forward? Why I think, not? I think historically not? the Knights have never been one to fight these charges. Yeah, but why not? If if you like, 
because it's there in the comment section. People, you know, I'm 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 seeing people, you know, supporting Leo. Why not? Why not go down there and say I only ever had eyes for the ball. I was coming to a stop. I hadn't completely stopped, but I was slowing down. Why not put a case forward? I it was only going to be a one to two ban. You're like you're only going to get another week for it. Well, Jerome Hughes did the same thing. He put his hands on the ref, and I think he had absolutely every right to to nudge the ref out of the road to make a try saving tackle. And they opted, look, you know what, we're not going to risk it. Cop the one, move on. Yeah. People that get paid to fight this shit obviously had a look at it. They're not just going to, you know, do whimsy flimsy, you know, decision. I guarantee if, it, if it's a finals it, game, yeah. if it's a finals game or anything like that, absolutely, you're, you're fighting. It's disappointing in oh, the yeah. season. You're fighting with too, anything in that situation. You can take someone to fight be easy to drive to Sydney. Yeah. Does it? Does it also, if you take a guilty, like if you take the plea, does that help with your loading after the fact? Like if you go, look, we'll cop the one week, but also if something were to happen down the track, your loading ain't going to be as bad. Fuck it. Let's just take it, move on. If you fight it and you lose it and something that happened later in the year, does that perhaps, you know what I mean, multiply maybe you sus- like you'll get a greater suspension later in the year? Is that how it works or not? Not sure. Not sure. Maybe that's another thing. Maybe that's mm. another straight to go, you know what, get the less loading, get cop the one week, move on. So. Yeah. Anyways, Jesus, bit of um, getting fucking hot. It's like a like a courtroom in here at the moment. Felt like um, <laughs> NRL three hundred and sixty minus the twenty thirty years. Yeah, ago. you're not like bu- buzzing fucking Kenny going at it. What are we here to talk about? Boys? You? I've completely forgotten. I feel like I'll, yeah, I'll, you know, what's I'll, going on? I'll, take, I'll, I'll be buzz over <laughs> over that other guy. Okay, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. See you later, battlers. Good night. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's it. Good. Feels like a true true crime podcast now, boys. Um, all right, let's it that let's it. That's a um Well, what are we up to? Yeah, you, where you, are we at? Where are we at? We're here to talk about a big game this week, guys. So that's it for yeah. this week's night of news. Now let's look ahead. That's gotta to be a now. record for length Fucking of over. night of news for one one thing, anyway. Fucking I'll over. let you move on. Let's move on, shall we? All right, let's look ahead to our round four clash against the Warriors, shall we? And here we are, guys. Uh, the Knights will travel across the ditch to take on the Wars at Go Media Stadium in Auckland this Sunday, the 31st of March, 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. I cannot fucking wait for April to come, so I don't have to live in two different time zones. Um, what else we got, boys? Yeah, don't confuse the battlers by putting up your Queensland oh, times. I know, I know. I know. The app just automatically converts at my end. I'm sorry. Mm. I've got to double check that shit all the time. Um, so yes, no, what? Of- sorry, the sorry to go off on another another path again. It's but, not about the Leo thing. No, it's about fucking KO. Um, <laughs> I swear my KO must be locked into Queensland times because I've gone to watch like F1 uh, wrestling's a few other things lately, and then you'll go into hit live and it'll come up like starting soon. And it'll oh. literally start like an hour later and it'll like, this must be on fucking Brisbane time. This must be on Queensland time. Mate, do not get me started. It hasn't been everything. Like I've obviously been able to watch footy and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. Something Mate, just weird. Do not get me started on Queensland not having daylight savings. Do mm. not. That is a deep rabbit hole. If you want to see an angry man, I think it's fucking crazy if you don't have it. But anyways, um, <laughs> yes. Um, so, Shawnee, what do you got for us, mate? You... um. Oh, okay, before we move on, you want me to um Oh sorry, we've got some more. Sorry, boys. Sorry. All right. Um yeah, we've got a couple Warriors, more. Warriors, Warriors curry currently sitting eleventh on the ladder, also on two points the same as the Knights after going loss, loss, win, exactly the same as the Knights. The Knights coming in uh on th- uh, coming into this game 13th on the ladder on the ladder with a minus 15 point peripheral. Uh, oh. With sports, sorry, and the odds. Uh, sports bet uh, had the dollar forty three favourites with the Knights outsiders at two dollars eighty two. Um, some statistics ahead of um, our round four clash. Also, guys, if you can sort of see on the screen, some ones that stand out to me, uh, particularly for the Knights boys. Uh, what am I seeing? Where do I see it? Thirty nine errors already, third most in the NRL. Not great, and also making the second most amount of tackles. Thus far, of any other NRL team with a thousand and eighty, the Warriors not too far off. Fourth man of tackles, a thousand and fifteen. Um, nothing really jumping out. Yes, the big ones for me. 
But yeah, in the season. I don't like being third or highest on the error count. So hopefully we can uh, we can drop down from that. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's um, let's move into this. I'm a stat man. All right. So uh, the stats no one's been waiting for because <laughs> they're fantastic. Newcastle Knights versus New Zealand Warriors at Go Media Stadium, Auckland. Let's have a look. Nine wins. One draw and 14 losses the Knights have had for a win percentage of 37.5. A bit better than uh, Townsville. I was going to say, is that better or worse than that Townsville one? It's better than Townsville. Okay. Um, in New Zealand, nine wins, one draw, 15 losses, 36% win rate in New Zealand. Um, then we move on to these guys. Uh, at Go Media Stadium, Last win was in 2019, round eight. We won 36 to 18. The most points the Knights have scored in a game over there is 38. The biggest winning margin, 24. Most points scored in the first half, 18. Biggest halftime margin is 12. Biggest win, 38 to 14, all the way back in 1998. And our biggest loss, there's two of them, uh, 52 to 10. In 2007 and 42 0 in 1999. Jeez, they, they avenged that yeah. big win we had against them in 98. Mm, yep. And uh, interesting one we've never held the Warriors scoreless in New Zealand. There you go. So, mm. Okay. Interesting, interesting. interesting. <laughs> well, make of that what you will, Battlers. Speaking yeah. of stats, just quickly, um, uh, Benny um, Schroeder here said, what are the stats of kicking the ball out in the fall this season? Benny, it feels like we'd be uh, approaching... to 50%, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be approaching breaking that record, I'm sure, Benny. 50, yeah. 50. Mm. Well, I assure you, Battlers, one of these days, Sean's going to read out some good stats, all right? Yeah. We're a bit overdue. You had a... Re- mate, you peaked. Last year, you peaked with some of these record breakers. I know. It's been Nick a bit of a nice downhill slide, go back mate. onto that shit. Mm. Yeah. What round do we play the Tigers again? I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> Mate, Mate, the way these stats are going, they're probably not going to be fantastic either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah so, uh, your popularity like, dipped a little bit, Sean. It's dipped a little bit, mate. So hopefully you can start pumping our tires. It's, up it's, look, point. most people are probably sitting there thinking, this guy must just go for all you know negative stats. Mate, that's all I'm given. Like, uh, Man, I don't want to sit here and say it's the club's fault, but it that's is. what I'm handed. <laughs> Who else can you blame? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, anyways, let's jump right into it. What we're all here for, let's take a look at this week's team list battlers. So strap yourselves in. Here we go. Starting off, we're going to start off with the hosts hosting us this round. The Warriors, uh, the back line consisting of Roger, Tuvasa Shek at fullback, Dallin Wateli Zalesniak, almost got that out, almost. Uh, Rocco Berry and Adam Pompey in the centres with Marcelo Montoya on the wing, Luke Metcalf and the veteran, Sean Johnson at 5'8". Looking at the Knights' back line, Captain Caelan Ponga, Tom Jenkins retains his spot with Dane Gagai and Brabham Best in the centres. Anari Tuwala also keeping his spot uh, with Tyson Gamble and Jack Cogger in the halves. Comment away what you thought of Jack Cogger's performance. Should he have kept? Should Jacko have come back in? Let us know in the comments. Um, moving along to in the middle with the big boys. And Fenor Blake, Wade Egan makes his return. Big, big boost for the Warriors. Mitch Barnett, the ex-Knight, the uh, the elbowing machine himself. Jackson Ford, Curdy Capel, and Tau Harris in the lock position for the Warriors. Moving along to our boys, the Knights, Jacob Saifidi. Phoenix Crossman will be starting hooker once again with Daniel Saifidi promoted from the bench into the starting um Starting proposition with Leo Thompson no longer available. Uh, Tyson Frizzell, Kai Pierce-Paul, and Adam Elliott in the lock position. Moving right along to the benches for either side, we have Dar- Freddie Lusick at 14, Murata Niakore, Bunty Afoa, and Dylan Walker on the bench with Tom Ale, Jazz Tavanga, Chanel Harris-Tavita, Tamare Martin, and Ali Laotate. Tower tie, I'm going to say. Sorry if I butchered that. On the extended bench for the Warriors. For the Knights, Jaden Braley is back at 14 with Matt Croker. Jack Hetherington is back from that ankle injury, which is great news. Brody Jones. Brody Jones in the 17. Um, with Dylan Lucas named 18th man. Jed Cartwright, Tom Kant, Will Price, and Jackson Hastings on the extended bench. So let us know what you think about the uh, the omission of uh, Dylan Lucas, guys. So uh, Also, the referees. The referees for this game will be Chris Butler and Peter Goff. 
Tell you what, I'm not. I'm, there's been a little bit of contention, you know, about Cogger still starting. I'm not surprised with that. O'Brien come out and said he was happy with how the Hales played last week, so that's really no surprise to me that Cogger's still in there. Um, and hopefully he's more comfortable this week and we see a little bit more out of him. But um, I did see in the comments once we posted the team list that um, Brody Jones was getting absolutely hammered. So, and a lot of people were thinking Lucas should have been in, you know, which is you know it's an interesting argument. But what do you boys think on that? I'm really surprised, man. I am. I didn't think he had a bad game. I'm not watching that game and going, he had a shocker or like he's just, you know, I, I guess stats don't tell everything, but as far as I know, his stats look pretty good. Um, I don't know, Sean, did you seen some we didn't see or? Um, I've actually been, you know, paying quite close attention to the, to the cup side this year. I know that um, last year we, we didn't, but this year I am, and I'm really impressed with how Brody Jones is playing in New South Wales Cup. For me, he's one of our stand up, uh, standout middlemen. Um, and the other thing as well, you know, you when you're sitting there saying, oh, Lucas should have got the nod before Brody Jones, it's like, well, hang on. Brody Jones is playing in the middle. And he's, I don't know if anyone's paid any attention to Brody Jones lately, but it, he's about this wide across the shoulders. He's massive. He's bulked up something massively. Um, yes, you, you, you're saying you want to replace a front rower in Leo Thompson with a second rower who's just come from the centers in Dylan Lucas. I'm, that doesn't really make mm. sense to me. I didn't in, mind though when last week when we had when they did get it, Lucas in and they just shifted Frizen in the middle. That was me personally. Like, I, I thought it was, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't roll with that, to be honest. I, I completely understand where you're coming from, and if if maybe Brody Jones is absolutely fucking killing it, yeah, well, mate, it. he's he's playing well enough in New South Wales Cup. Like I said, he's a standout in the middle in New South Wales Cup. You've yeah. got to reward him with a shot. Yeah. And and what if he takes it? What if he takes it like he did? Was it 2019? Was it 2019 when he had that game and scored? Scored was it one or two well, tries, thing, whatever it thing. was, and everyone wanted to rename think, the stadium to the victim of his own success. Stadium. He's a victim of his own success because of that game, I think, because everyone was pumping out. Like you said, like there was people renaming the stadium after him. All of a sudden, he'd hit the map, and he was like, everyone was expecting huge things out of him. And okay, that didn't really, he didn't live up to that. So mm. now I think everyone's, you know, the narrative is that he's just terrible. But you know, yeah, you can't mind, judge players on what they did. You know, if, yeah, okay, maybe, it, okay, we'll be the first to say, I think the, the the handful of games he did play, it wasn't that many last year. Did he light the world on fire? No, he probably was a little underwhelming, let's be honest. Um, but you can't judge off that. You know, if the guy's had a, a, you know, clearly he's been impressing coaching staff and doing the right stuff at um, preseason and if he's coming in a New South Wales Cup and killing it, what more does the guy need to do mm. to get a call up? You can't judge a player on what they did Nine months ago, you got to look at what's in front of you now. So he's obviously worked on a lot of things. Maybe he's coming. He's added a few strings to his bow. He's a, he's a more dynamic player. So I guess it's you know it's the old saying you know what have you done for me lately? But in saying that, if he comes out this week, he's got a chance. He's got a shot here. If he comes out and plays really well and kills it, a lot of people are going to forget about you know the oh. narrative that he's not a great player. And I, yeah, you know, unfortunately, gonna, yeah, it's, it's, it's just the, human nature. So it's the Inari Tuala effect. We'll name it that, boys. It's 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 judging people by seasons that have happened prior and not really looking at the player we have now and mm. more recent performances. So, um, cause yeah, people, as you said, so short memories, like the guy had a, a couple of good games for us. Yeah. You're not going to get a rookie player come in and do that week in, week out. You know, didn't he get injured for a while too? He, he was, yes, he, he did. He was out for a while as well. So. Yeah. I think he had a calf injury. Uh, sorry. A, a quad injury or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, sorry, yeah, sorry. I, I bring this, I bring this up again, the, the interchange bench and the reserves. Um, what is something we were questioning a lot in the off season? Forward stocks. Forward stocks. That was our biggest thing is we wanted one big, more. Big boppers. Big bopper. Well. I'm glad it's... I asked that question because every time you throw one of these questions, I always sit there going, fuck, I hope I get the right answer. But I'm glad <laughs> what, did I that say? what did I say six months ago? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's we, we've been saying for ages now we need one more big person. We're light on the front rowers, and we are. Have a look at it. So yeah. Brody Jones, who's made the transition, and like I said, he's playing better in New South Wales Cup than someone like a Jed Cartwright 
who we got in as a second rower. Mm. So you look at that list there. Um, Matt Croker's obviously he's come in, so he's he's got a spot. He would have been one of the people coming in had we been full strength. Um, so then who else have you got? What other names have you got that you can throw around? There's there's Brody Jones. Um, there's the guy who oh, I forget his name. Um, he he got SG Ball Player of the Year or something a couple of years ago, and then he had his Martin. he was out for the year for with ACL. No, uh, Brian Brian is that his last name? Oh um, yeah, so maybe you're talking Paul about Brian him. or someone. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Like who? Who is it? Who are you putting in the middle? Tom Kant is a second rower. Jed Cartwright we got in as a second rower and hasn't been playing as good in cup as Brody. And if you want to sit there and say Brody only had one good game a few years ago, he's done nothing since. Well, what's Jed Cartwright done hmm. to earn yeah. that spot? You know yeah. what I mean? So there's all these people that are so quick to put the guy down, but give me an honest name that you would put there in front of number seventeen. Yeah, and let's be honest, the, the, the pack we're going up against, we're going to need the big boys. They're not a light pack. They're not a light pack. One of the, one of the better forward packs in the competition. So, yeah, I, I, I guess when you break it down that way, yeah, I can I can absolutely see it. Look, does, is Dylan Lucas a bit hard done by? Yeah, like that's, but that goes to show you the, you know, the quality of the roster. You know, when you've got guys like Dylan Lucas missing out, yeah. It's also a good thing to as well, because if we keep like if he keeps missing out and we keep I don't want to say doing the dirty on him, but if he just keeps missing out, is he one player that you can see, you know, slipping through our fingers and going to another club and then absolutely killing it and being like we've done it again type of situation. Oh. Yeah. Time. Coffee again. Please. Oh, here comes that coffee again. Bloody mate, you're on a good wicket up there. I know you're not you didn't get your um Who won the debate, sweetheart, yeah. too? <laughs> I know I know you didn't get your um your members event, but you're getting your coffees every oh, night. Oh, how did I not start with that? But the first thing's first. We're going to go down to Q&A, Queensland members event. But anyways, yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you, love. Um, so, yeah, what were you, uh, sorry, what were you talking about? Dylan Lucas, when's he signed till? Um, uh, Lachlan Drummond here has said he signed until the end of 2025. I don't think we lose Lucas, man. I think he's just born and bred newy boy. Yeah. He's, he's, not, he's not going anywhere, man. He's not going anywhere. He'll be, yeah, uh, I Lachlan, think the succession uh, plan with Frizzell, because let's, and by the way, happy Frizzell anniversary, boys. It was four years ago today we signed Tyson Frizzell too. Mm, so yeah. 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 All the way back in twenty. Mr. Reliable. Mr. Reliable. But, um, yeah, the coach obviously sees something in um in Brody because, like, Lachlan Drummond here has said, he's surprised Cartwright wasn't named to us. He ran over 200 metres um, in the front row in New South Wales Cup and had 122 post-contact metres. So for for him not to get a start for Brody too, there's obviously, the, you know, Brody's playing well. They're going to give him a shot, so hopefully he capitalises on it. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on it again. We'll circle back through to um, Jack Cogger, boys. What are we sort of making of Jackie Cogger, you know? Well, like I said, O'Brien came out and said he was happy with it. You know, let's, it was it was the guy's first game. His first game in that position. Exactly. Let's not be too harsh on him. Like, yeah. you know, hopefully this week, like I said, he's, you know, he's more comfortable in the position and we'll try, you know, be open to trying a few new things. I'm sure O'Brien has, you know, pointed out a few things that he know he's he's capable of that he didn't do in his first appearance. So he'll be focusing on those things. I'm expecting a better game out of him. Yeah, and that's another thing I'm I'm seeing a lot of online and I go back to this a lot because you see some weird and wonderful things on these diehard pages and Mighty Knights pages. And even when we put up a post and you see battlers going at it. Um, <laughs> really battling. Really, really battling it out. And you, you sit there thinking, fuck. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, they're, they're all calling, you know, two weeks ago, 90% of the people were calling for Hastings' head. And now everyone wants him back in the team because they have this, this, you know, oh, he did really well in cup. He did really well in cup against a side that had no starting halves. You have to remember their starting halves were playing for the Melbourne Storm. Mm. So their halves in um what's you what 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 are their names? Um, that, um that, and, they are, should have been in that side. Lost their steering wheel. They, they yeah. had under nineteen jersey flag boys. Against yeah. players like Jackson, maybe not, Houston, maybe not so killing it, but he did. Can't. He did what you would expect 
a first grader to come back and do, right? Like, what was it, five or six yeah, tries so- this? You know, yeah. So so you can't sit there and go, oh, the score was 50 to whatever it was because you have to remember there was a couple of teenagers leading that, ty- that team around. They were never going to score 50-odd points to match us. So you, you can't sit there and just say Hastings has to be back on that performance either. Mm. It's, yeah. it's been one game. Yeah, Let it play out a little bit first. Well, look, one player who's I think um, Andrew Webster and co are absolutely going to target this game if they clearly would have watched our um, match against the Storm. Tommy Jenkins, mm. I bet you he's been catching plenty of high balls this week. So. Yeah, because that is going to be an area they're going to target. Um, Hang on, but just before we move on, I just wanted to bring this one up. Um, Daniel Connors has just said, so Jones plays good in cup, deserves a first grade spot, but Hastings doesn't. I think that's because there's a position there for Jones to make. Like, you're not going to, like I said, go back. He's only had one game, um, Cogger, in that position. It's not that Hastings doesn't deserve to be there. It's but we've the coach has decided to go with Cogger, and you can't just sack the guy after one game, especially after a win. And the bigger yeah. thing is, too, like – Changing a half is a much – it disrupts your team much more than bringing in a, a front roller, let's be honest. Like, you go a chopping and changing – front roller as well. Yeah, you go cho- – chopping and changing a bench front roller really won't affect the team performance as much as if you were to chuck in a different half every other week. Like, yeah. you got to keep that in context too. Like, I understand what you're saying. There's absolute merit in what you're saying, Daniel, but – especially after a win, you know, the boys, had they have lost maybe, and Jack does what he does, maybe they go, okay, you had your spell, maybe come back in, maybe, but definitely not. Yeah, if this... Cogger doesn't perform this week and we lose and it's terrible, don't be surprised if Hastings comes back the following week. But like I said, it's always hard that, you know, if he hasn't, it's only one game and then we won. Like, yes, it was against, like we said, you know, they had their halves out in Melbourne. It definitely wasn't a full strength Melbourne team, but as you always say, Link, you can only play what's in front of you. So, and yeah. we won that game, so. Yeah. And I guarantee, man, the coaches, the coaches would be it's some sort of mind game. They're always the co- the job of a coach is to get the very best of their players, and if that means pitting them against each other and playing a bit of not not mind games, that's that might be the right analogy. I'm saying playing mind games with the player, but dropping him back to cup and sort of telling him, mate, you know, you got to work on A, B, and C, um, mate. Jacko, we, we talked about it. we we you know we think the world of Jackson Hastings. The guy's going to go out there and try and do everything he can to get back in. So, yeah, just, I don't know. Watch this space with Jacko, and hopefully hopefully Cogs comes and plays a good game too. Look, everyone's got an opinion, all the battlers. I've seen people talking about bringing Price into the halves. I've been seeing people talking about having Hastings and Cogger in the halves. There's, everyone has an opinion. So everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but, yeah. I'll tell you who does need a really good game, though. A guy that we kind of left out of the conversation, I think Tyson Gamble needs to come in and have a really good game. Let's be honest He's been yeah, on the best bit. lately, yeah. He hasn't, no. He, he's been like, you can't forget, the guy's always involved. He's super energy. You know, he's still getting plenty of touches on the ball. It's not like he's not taking his opportunities. He's just got to work on icing those opportunities a bit better. So hopefully another game, you know, because I think if Tyson maybe has another quiet or underperforms a little bit, maybe maybe then the pressure shift the on him. Or... Do you get the vibe with Gamble sometimes, especially the last two games at the start of the game? He's, you just guys just drank in unison then. That was funny. But, um, yeah, do you think that he's maybe trying, it feels like he's trying a little bit too hard to impress, and he's just, like, making these little mistakes that he normally oh. wouldn't be doing? I don't doubt it. Like, so maybe there's a bit of pressure on there that he's worried, you know, he's seeing that, you know, his other partner get well, I think it was just the axe. So he's got it swinging above him and he's a little bit concerned coming out, trying to impress and making a few little mistakes. I think it was the show you weren't on, Storky, that um, Sean and I were talking about perhaps, yeah, maybe an exp- explanation as to why we were seeing um, Gamble kicking so much and maybe, you know, making a few poor errors was there's too much pressure put on him. Like yeah. whether it was Jacko's ankle or something was going on, it seemed more, it just seemed odd. Last year you sort of, Jacko was more, in control of those sort of situations where it was the game against um, Cowboys, wasn't it? Was it Cowboys? Yeah, it must have been the Cowboys game. Um, we sort of spoke about it. So possibly, and hopefully maybe with Cogger does the little things a bit better. Yeah, it just allows Gamble to do what he does, but he's ball running eyes up sort of football player. So yeah. That yeah, brings up a good, good point as well. Yeah. Gamble also rejected a counter offer to prove he's worth more. I love can you that. Imagine, can you imagine doing that. that? Can you imagine going more pressure on yourself as well? Look, um, 
I'm going to reject your offer. Just wait out and see how I actually go. Because you're sitting there in your mind going, I'm going to play heaps better and they're going to give me more. Yep, I love that. Four blokes come out since then and had, you know, worse games than he did last year. That's also in the back of his mind that he's like, fuck, now my entire career is at stake. Not just my spot, my starting spot, but also my career. Because if I get punted from the Knights, where am I going to end up? Yeah. So he, there would be a lot going on in his head right now. I love that. I love the fact he, you know. Love it, I love it, Because I think it was like around 200, 250, I think, with the, the figures thrown around. Make of that what you will. Um, I love that, bro. I love that. Because, you know, yes, okay, you, you could be a bit salty that he didn't sign and we work out and then you got it like a starting 5-8. Let's be mm. honest. If, if, if you got Tyson Gamble's form in that, end of last year for 200 250 that is a fucking bargain yeah. but i love the fact that he's going to go no i want to prove it and he's got everything on the line like this is this guy's whole career everything so for him to do that man it takes some fucking balls and i think that just typifies the kind of player he is i fucking love that so i hope he does go out there and fucking kill it and then forces oh, the to go, yeah, do. no i'm worth two to twice as much whatever three times mm-hmm. as much whatever it may be yeah, um, yeah. Absolutely. Keep in mind, he might not be doing this just for the Knights. Like, if mate, he plays really well, and then we go, yeah, you did play well, but you we're still not going to up our offer much more than what it is. There'll be other clubs watching as well. So he's playing to impress everybody, not just not just the Knights. So yeah, like I said, he's he's gambling his career really. Mm. Yeah, pardon the pun, battlers. Pardon mm. the pun. Um, all right, well let's uh, let's take a look at this week's key matchup, boys, because I think this one we've been absolutely fucking nailing these of lately. So I think we might get another really good one here. Um, Adam Fanua Blake up against Jacob Saifidi, particularly with the absence of Leo Thompson. Mm. Uh, we thought this was going to be particularly important. Um, Jacob really needs to step up his game. I, I think when we're talking off air, I'm pretty sure last game last year was this our key matchup. I swear we've done a key matchup between these two boys before. Mate, any t- yeah, any game with Fanua Blake in it, it's hard not to pick whoever he's against yeah. him. Yeah, well, we, we played them uh, three times last year, so it might have been, might have been, been one of the three. One of the three. One of the knighted mm. historians in the uh, comment section, you might be able yeah. to enlighten us on that. But uh, let's take a look at the um, statistics um, of these two boys. Um, pretty much 28, 27-year-old, only a year separating them. Adam Fanua Blake got the year on him, uh, 189. Centimeters, Adam Fanel Blake, 123 kilos. Holy mm. shit. Yeah, there's so much fat on him. He's bloody huge. My God. Uh, 162 games, 26 tries. Stellar. That is such such good statistics for a front roller. Um, and with Jacob Saifidi, 195 centimeters. Sorry, touched on that. 114 kilo uh, with 145 games and 11 tries. Um, Adam Fanua Blake for this year already bagging two tries from three games. Absolutely incredible. Uh, four offloads, averaging 12 hit ups a game, nine tackle breaks already, 535 run meters, 72 tackles for 97.3%. That is elite yeah. level prop there, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. It's off the bus. Tackle breaks nine. Would you like say the he's the game's best prop? Oh, between him and Payne Ass, man, they are the tip. Yeah, you could argue. You could argue, yeah, Tino. I reckon they're the three. They're they're the three dudes. Absolutely, they're mate. The when that news came out that he was possibly leaving the Warriors, it was you know it was back page news. It was everywhere. So, mate, yeah. you're not one of the best players in the game if that. that and it's it crazy like. that he's only 28 because you sit yeah. there and think that he could easily be in his 30s. Yeah, he's still got plenty of years left in him. Yeah, Crazy. yeah, you could say still he's he's still not in his prime, which is absolutely yeah. scary. Yeah. Um, Jacob Saifidi, three games, um, one offload, averaging eleven point three head ups, no tackle breaks, three hundred and eighty two meters, uh, eighty four tackles with a tackle efficiency of ninety three point three. So look, do those statistics jump on the off the page like Adam or Blake? No, but I, I think we can say one thing that we, we wouldn't say questioned, but you know, the question was kind of asked. I think you said, Storky, um, are the Safs the kind of brothers you want to see him fight up a bit more, putting on some shots? And, you know, mm. we've seen it from both the boys. And 
Jacob Saifedi absolutely coming out and licked bloody Xavier Savage. Uh, his brother came out and smacked. Um, Swear you said licked him then. That's, licked, yeah. That's what oh, I heard. Oh, that's licked, meaning lick. It's like uh, if you come out and lick someone, like you, you absolutely smack them. You know, like, yeah, well, I'm them. not. I'm picturing a different lick. Oh, and okay, okay, good. Not, not a dirty one, just on the forehead or the cheek. Come out, if you come out and lick them, oh, yeah. you absolutely you you planted one on them. You 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 got them good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I, should, I probably should have explained it before. Used that term. <laughs> must be um, Queensland. Queensland. Yeah. <laughs> must be. Yeah, mate. Us. We in in New South Wales. We don't just walk around licking other blokes, mate. It's mm. um. Well, some do. Not there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, well, if it's if that's what you're into, then so you wouldn't be intimidated if I'm, you're facing up against me, Sean. I'm like, I'm gonna fucking lick you, you dog. You go what? At least take me out. At least yeah, no, take no, me out for dinner first. You that weirdo. does sound like a threat, actually. Yeah, I take it back. <laughs> but could you imagine in this game, you know, as dominating as Fenella Blake is? Could you imagine if um, Jacob comes out and absolutely poleaxes? That's what we use poleax instead of licked. Yeah, he come out and absolutely poleaxed Fenella Blake, mate. Mm. What? Imagine the lift that, that would give the team. That'd be if fair. it was a chief, really chief Carroll type thing. And that's what God, needs to I miss those rivalries. They need to do that. Yeah, they need so that. Yeah. yeah, they need yeah. that. They need to be like, I'm looking for him because this is going to lift the team. So I, yeah. I love the game as it is now. Like, I think we've got a great product. I don't think we've seen rugby league played this well for a long time. But one thing I do miss yeah. is the old school rivalries. I fucking miss them so much. And I think it comes down to like probably your sports science and that. And they, you know what I mean? They want to clean the game up. They don't want that. But Boy, boy, I remember the front cover of Rugby League Week, and it was a busted ass picture of Spud Carroll and a busted ass picture of Chief on the front cover. And you went, oh, boy. How good Mate, was those that? Those were the days. Those are the days. Mm. How good would it be if Payne Haas came out and they were playing the Warriors? He's just like, oh, I'm going to like full smack talk. I'm going to fuck you up, Adam. And Adam sort of replied, and these boys just go at all. Jared Warrior Hargreaves calls out. Yeah. Jacob Saifini. And you know what I mean? That'd be so good, especially the big boys. That'd be so Doesn't good. happen enough, eh? Like, I think it's probably right. the image. Yeah. If these people started actually using social media like the rest of us, would you actually want to say what you want about Gallon? But mate, he used to do that type of stuff, and you know, yeah. people hated him for it. Some people, but mate, it I was actually, really I, it's up. funny. It's funny you mention this. So I was at a um a Melbourne Storm members event. I got invited along. Don't oh, worry. that's I, why there's no Queensland Knights members then. Well, I went. It's never been mentioned in our group chat. Mate, yeah. I I went in. <laughs> you full, dirty dog. Full full nights kit. I was the only one, right? And I had. Um, Didn't you tip the storm last week as well? No, just kidding. And I had. Um, they had Mick Crocker. All unraveling now for Lincoln. They had Mick Crocker, and who was the other? Um, God, he was a uh, he was a New South Wales prop forward too. Uh oh, his name, name is Gaysmith at the moment. Played for no, the Storm. Didn't. Yeah, right. Back in the early 2000s. Anyways, I'm talking to Mick Crocker, and I said this. I'm like, mate, because the guys, you know, it, it was getting a bit loose. We had a few beers, and I'm like, Mick, why, why don't players come out and say this shit? You know, you, they're very robotic. That You know, they get these rep- journos, chuck a mic in them, and they just give the most generic, boring answers. You don't sort of – you don't get to see what they are. And he's like, mate, i tell you why. He goes, look, back in my Roosters day, right, Ricky Stewart would come out and says, boys, don't, don't fucking say anything. Don't – I'm coming for you, Jacob. Fucking start that with me. <laughs> um, and I and he's like, "What's out, man?" Um, like Ricky, Ricky would say to him, "Look, um, don't go saying anything because what'll happen is the newspapers will get a hold of a tidbit here and there, and they'll write a story, and it just blows up, right?" So he said, "But, but what Ricky Stewart would do? He said, if we were traveling or whatever, he said you'd be in your motel room early hours of the morning. Ricky Stewart would go buy thirty newspapers." And you go chuck them underneath all the players' um, doors. And you'd have all circled. He goes, look, boys, look at all this fucking shit they're saying. Fire up, you dogs. Blah, 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 blah. So he's like, you just do not want to give your opposition any fuel. You don't want to come mm. in and say anything because they're like, yeah, did you see what fucking Mick Crocker said? And saying this shit, saying this shit. So it's all about, obviously, your coach wants you to, to get that because they're like, look, boys, look what they're, you know, they're fucking saying this, they're saying this, they're saying this. But, yeah, that's why. At least Battler's having a crack at me for... Oh, mate, absolutely. Me. Yep. Todd said, convenient in the Sunshine, oh. Sunshine Coast. Falcons are a storm feeder club. And the link goes to a Melbourne event. How did you it actually that, end up at one? Like, it, that, was, yeah, it was a Suncorp Stadium and... Um, did the they owner, offer you free free piss or something? Oh, it was awesome. So it, the owner of the company place, I work mate, for... You're in a safe place. It's all good. The owner of the company I work for, he's a long-time Melbourne Storm supporter and as well as a couple of the other boys. 
And they said, look, they can't actually fill it. They've got some spots available. Do you want to go? And they said, look, it's it's free feed and beers all night. There was a double header up at Suncorp. I went, fuck yeah. I, I don't think I'd ever been to a corporate box at that point. So yeah, I'll go. Mate, everyone was so, I don't know. They're, they're a weird fucking supporter base. Like, I can't remember the bloke's oh, name. What? It wasn't. It, the they've never known. They've never been in the trenches. Oh, like but they haven't known what a, I can't remember. The, it wasn't Brett White. It's it's another prop forward. He played in the in the early two thousands. He was a gun player. His fucking name escapes me. He was there in Mick Crocker, and they were literally going table to table trying to talk to people. And these people are just weird. And I, mate, I'm just there having a ball with these guys. We got absolutely tanked. Had the best night ever. Just talking shit with these blokes. Uh, but I was in full kit, and they even had a crack at me about it. I was the only New South Wales supporter there. I was the only night supporter. So I, would have been I had so my night full kit. Night right. not full kit, like you weren't like full kit. Yeah, not full kit. Yeah, wait, huh? yeah, yeah. That would have been even more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't Mark Guy Cameron. I want to know the bloody name of this bloke. Keep, keep it. Melbourne Storm player. He was an absolute gun in the early two thousands. Prop forward. Played for New South Wales. He might have played for Australia too. He was a gun. Anyways, um, I digress. Where are we at, boys? Um, so, yeah, that was our key matchup for this week. All right, well, let's move it right along, shall we? Um, this week's Lock It In segment. What do you think, boys? Get ready, battle start firing your Lock It Ins. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the uh, one of the favourite segments, one of the all-time goaded segments of the night, the lock it in segment. So, uh, who's putting their hand up first this week, boys? Who's jumping in? I don't care. I'll go first. Why right, Stocky will go first. We should really lock this shit in before we go, should we? We, we, <laughs> you know, what we never do it. I'm the one who <laughs> uploads all the images in. and stuff. I'm the one who makes the images and uploads them. I should just put them in order and go right. This is the order every week. Lock yeah. it in. Yeah. Lock okay. that in. So we'll go through my lock it ins. My lock it in is that I'm going to give my lock it ins first this week. So I can give a tick on that one. Uh, Tyson Gamble, um, anytime try scorer. So I think he'll come out and, you know, have a good game. First time try score or anytime try score. Sorry. Uh, Knights, I'm, I hoped last week the error count would be down a little bit. I picked six and I think we like doubled that or more than doubled that. So I was very disappointed, but I'm hoping that we fix that up a little bit this week. Lock it in. We're going to have 10 errors or less. Um, Warriors to win the possession. I think that's just because they've you know got that big pack. So I think they're going to win the possession, but I am tipping the night one to 12. So I think it's going to be a really close one. I don't think we're going to flog them or anything, especially over there. But yeah, I think it's going to be a close one, one to 12 for Knights. All right, you can go next, Lincoln. All right, what do we got, boys? Load her up. Let's take a look. This week, I have Anari Tuala to make 20-plus runs, continuing his great form and proving all the haters wrong. Kai Pierce paul I hope they've done some good tape because I think he's going to have four offloads this game. So I'm hoping someone's going to be pushing up on support on our boy KPP. And I'm also he needs support to, to offload. He needs Give mm. him the boy some support. Come on, get around him. Um, and I'm also predicting he is going to make 70-plus post-contact meters. He's been absolutely sensational. So continuing that uptick. Bradman Best, anytime try scorer. I think that left edge is it's looking less and less rusty, boys. It's getting some It's getting some WD-40 on it. So let's hope we can uh, – like, like that trials try. Remember that great try up in Fiji when KP just broke him open and Brady runs like – 50, 60 metres, so let's yep. hope for one of them. Um, on the back of that, Caelan Ponga will be providing that try assist, whether it's an absolute rocket out of dummy half or skipping yep. across or whatever it may be, lock KP in for a try assist. The Knights have got to complete it 80-plus percent. If we are any chance, if we are any chance, that is a must. That is a must. However, Battlers, however, I'm yet to see a full 80-minute Knights performance. We haven't got the best record over there. Happy to be proven wrong. Hashtag not a true supporter. I do have the Warriors one the twelve, and if we do manage to keep it cl uh, close, that we can walk away with that. It's pretty good. There's a lot of good teams that would go over to, to the Warriors. Of course, you want the win. You always want the win. But if you can go over there and, and duke it out, let's hope for that. We don't want to repeat performance of what happened to us at the end of last year. So I do have us in a tight one, but there's going to be some silver linings if that is the case. Of course, I want us to win. I cannot. Stress that enough, all right? But yep. they're my lock-it-ins this week. 
Yeah, nice. Um, mine, I've gone for, you know, last year how I was going for a bit of some themes. I went, you know, Upton Funk and a few other things. I've gone for another theme this week, um, making mine a little a little special when she decides, decides to load. I'm uh, going for a bit of whiz frizz. Um, <laughs> That's good. I'm, How good I'm were thinking, they? Like cocaine oh, for kids back in the day. That's fantastic. Straight sugar. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm tipping uh, Tyson Frizzell to have ninety five uh, plus ninety five percent tackle efficiency. Uh, I think he's going to run over a hundred meters. Thirty of uh, he's going to have more than thirty post contact meters. He's going to have more than three tackle breaks, two plus offloads. He's going to have zero errors. He's going to have that good of a game. He's not going to make really? a single error. Um, also, put him down as an anytime try scorer. I think the Knights are going to make more than 320 tackles. And unfortunately, I've gone the same way as Lincoln. Just you, you put our record, still don't see a complete side. The halves, still questionable. Our outside backs, as much as, you know, I'm a Tuala Express fan, um, mate, they've got some gun wingers. They're a good fucking team, man. They're 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 a good side. They've got some gun players back, so yeah, Warriors Wait, one to were, twelve. If you were going to go for a whiz for any um any player, yeah, Frizz is going to be the one, Mister Consistency. Yeah, yeah, whiz Frizz. I'm calling like that. Him. And something a little bit different for our lock it ins this week and also this year. I feel like we're not accountable enough. For our lock it in. So I've gone for an on the ball to see who's on the ball. Our lock it in leaderboard. Lincoln's on top. So so far he's he's five from 19, 26.3%. Lincoln, so we'd call them locks per round. You know how we have, you know, this person's gonna do this and this person. That we'd say that's a lock, right? Yep. Average Lincoln's averaging six point three a game. I'm four from 16, so I'm 25% at the moment. I'm doing about 5.3 locks per per game uh, per round. Storky's sitting at the very bottom there. He's two from 13, 15.3%. You don't yeah. you don't go for very many. You usually only put about four. Yeah, four. I only like to have four. I don't like to you know just blow the load and do too many of them. But um, mm. yeah, I'm gonna have to start taking this shit more seriously. Obviously, like you said, so <laughs> start making yeah, mate, some of those um, really far out there ones anymore. And um. Yeah, because yeah. that's that's a bit average. But you know, hey, say, maybe you know, maybe become a hashtag not a true supporter story every now. Mate, and I don't know, but um, you know, as I say, <laughs> even a even a broken clock's right twice a day. So you know, we'll see how we go with that. Yeah, well, yeah. So go. at the end of the year, someone, um, one of us is going to finish on top. Let's bring up some of the battlers. Lock yeah. it in. Okay, so we've got Mike Allen here. Has said, "Lock it in, JSAF anytime try scorer." Uh, best anytime try scorer, Ponga, 212 run meters, four line breaks, Newcastle, 1 to 12. Okay, moving Take that on. Every day. Yeah, we've got Todd. Um, Todd Punya has said, lock it in. Cogger for two try assists. KP for a try. I think that's a that's a good one. Uh, Gags for a double. Jack Hetherington for 50 post contact meters. Nice. Okay, I don't mind that one. So this one just gets straight to the point. This one here is from, um, sorry for saying your name wrong, Parari um, Maytava, um, said KP with a try and no miss goals. Mate, he was on fire last week. Mate, he was. Mm. It was Killing him. He was shooting him from everywhere, mate. He was a sniper. Um, okay, we've got Justin, um, good mate of the show, Justin. Lock it in, Knights 1-12, to 12, KPP try, four offloads and two try assists. Best and Jenkins anytime try scorer and Jace after rattle his key matchup. So it'd be nice to see Jenkins um Jenkins get over and have a good game. So I'm there with you, Justin. Let's hope for that one. <laughs> uh Elliot, Mitch Barney, Simbin send off. There you go. I like it, mate. I I got a few of those old send them off Simbins right last year. So I don't know he's how always many good for, he's always good for one, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, I don't know how many I'll be predicting this year now that we're a bit more serious with these, but um, Mitch Barnett, Simbin send off KP one try, um, AFB 200 plus meters, JSAF 175 plus meters, KPP three offloads, one leading to an assist. 
So there you nice. go. The, up, the upgrade there. We'll just grab a couple more from boys. Uh, we've got John McGrath, KP, three try assists, Cogger, 40-20. Mate, I think this is the first week I haven't picked someone going for a 40-20. You know, they've been letting me down, so I've had a break from the 40-20s <laughs> this week. Um, and no doubt you'll probably get that one. John Cogger will come out and do a 40-20, and so will everybody else. We'll have Heather <laughs> kicking 40-20s in this game, no doubt. Um, Tuala, 200 plus, um, 200 plus run meters, I guess he's putting there. Um, nine plus tries. 200 plus tries, wouldn't that be something to, <laughs> something to behold? Um, Knights 1 to 12. So, speaking of the 40 20s, are 2040 still a rule? As far as I know, yeah. I yeah, swear, I'm, it has, has anyone ever kicked one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Is it? Was it Cleary? Yeah. Was it Cleary? Someone, I'm sure it was Cleary, but I'm I saw, sure. I've never seen one kicked that I can yeah. remember. It wasn't yeah, a night okay. game, I don't think it was a night game, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm I can't sure. remember who it was, but yeah, it has been done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. it was clear. But um, who have we got here? We'll take three more. Um, Paul Rama here said Fizz or Gagai, man of the match. So I like that, mate. The way Gagai's been playing lately, I do not doubt it. And Fizz, to be honest. So yeah, that's the old, really well. The old, yeah, the old dogs. Well the old boys had experience. It's paying off. Um, mm. Knights 1 to 12. Um, Cameron here is going really simple. He just, um, I just want to see some exciting footy. So, mate, let's hope that that lock it in because you know nothing worse than going and seeing a terrible game, especially when you lose. So, hopefully, that one's lock it in, and we'll grab one more here. We've got Christopher Wilson, at KP, two try assists, two hundred plus meters, best anytime try scorer, one hundred and thirty plus meters, Knights less than ten errors. So he's he's backed me on that less than ten errors. So, mate, fingers crossed, mm. you know. Pinky promise there, Christopher, that we hopefully get that one uh, that one right. But um, yeah, what well, third third overall in the error count is not great in the competition yeah. so far. So yeah, we need to get that very much sorted out. So less so, than ten would be would be great. So thanks for all those locking in battlers. Obviously, we can't read them all out. It would be here till twelve o'clock tonight. But um, we definitely did anyone, did anyone else so. did anyone else tip the storm or are they just trying to make Sean and I look warriors the warriors oh the warriors not the fucking storm the warriors no I'm um, having a quick thing did no. you. No, no, everyone. Is no, no, we did. Yep, Cameron did. Here we go. Just had a bit of a Captain Cook and found this one. Cameron said Knights by four if we win, but I reckon Rory Warriors ah, one see? to twelve. So not a lot. You he's, thought he's, you could get away with that, Cameron? You he's a bit on the fence. Ahead. He hasn't hasn't fully committed, but yeah, he reckons the the Warriors one to twelve. So no, I love yeah, oh, yeah, from he's Cameron he's, from what I've seen in the comments. So we love it. It's good. He's he's half pregnant. There, he's sort of saying if they win, it'll be four, but if they lose. Very smart, Cameron. Maybe I should have done that. And actually, <laughs> I saw it here. Mark, Mark, you are the lottery winner. Robbie Kearns was the player I was thinking of, boys. Robbie Kearns. Oh, there you go. Okay. I was on the piss there with Robbie go. Kearns and, uh, and Mick Crocker. It was a fucking awesome night. Yeah, that would have been good. It was good. The Broncos lost too, so it was even fucking better. Yeah. There you go, guys. There you Nick go. 2040. Um, DCE has kicked a 2040 against Canberra. So there oh, you go. There you go. There you go, Doesn't Mike. surprise me. It's a good smart work, Mike. Stuff, so there you go. Good stuff. All right, let's move right along, guys, to the Punt Club, shall we? All right, the Punt Club top five heading into this week. Ben Walker, I swear Benny Walker. I should say after round four, I've obviously had a... No, oh, round three. Yeah, this round is three. round four. Yeah, no, 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 all good. I haven't made a mistake. Don't second guess yourself, bro. No, I yeah. shouldn't bro, second guess myself. Always perfect on the show. <laughs> no, <kidding>. Always. <laughs> We're going to deduct a point from you, Sean. But anyways, um, someone edit that out, would you? Ben mm. Walker. Ben Walker's uh, sitting on the tippity top, twenty-one points, thirty-three margin. Mark M, uh, equal first, I should say, both thirty-three, so they're equal, equal. Uh, maybe alphabetically, Ben sitting on top. Uh, Delamere M on 20 points uh, with a 21 margin. Oscar M. Good name, Oscar. There's not enough Oscars around, boys. Mm. Get some more Oscars. Yeah, I only know two, like the Grouch and um, the, the Baby out of Ghostbusters too, but I don't I know any other Oscars. That's one more than me. I only know Oscar the Grouch. There you well, go. Well, this Oscar is certainly no Grouch. He's coming fourth in the, the most competitive punk club there is on the planet. So good on you, Oscar. Love Kicking it. goals, brother. Kicking goals. And Jody S., Go the girls, 19 points, currently coming fifth on a 33 margin. So good on you, Jody. Stick it to All the right, man. I'll go first. I'll uh, I'll get this this ship moving. I've taken the Roosters to over the Panthers this week. The Rabbits. Oh, really? The okay. Yeah. Yep. 
taking the Rabbitohs over the Bulldogs, Cowboys over the Broncos, Seagulls over the Dragons. What a shit show this is going to be, Titans versus Dolphins. Um, mm-hmm. taking, the, taking the Dolphins. Warriors over the Knights. Let's skip over that quickly. Um, <laughs> the Sharks over the Raiders and the Eels over the West Tigers. They're my, my tips this week. Very good, mate. Very good. I'm sitting somewhere around about, I think I'm about 181 in the punt club out of about 900. So don't take my tips. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Who do you got next, mate? Next cab off who, the rank. Who, who wants to go? All right. I'll just, there you go. Dealer's choice. All right. Here we go. Uh, I've gone the Roosters over the Panthers also. I don't know why I had a crack at you, but yes, I'm going to go the Roosters. Yeah, yeah that's right. Nathan the Cleary. Nathan Cleary's out for like um, a month or something, isn't he? Yes, Nathan Cleary is out. Yeah. You yeah, had a crack at me uh, over the Rabbitohs, over the Bulldogs. Right. Yeah, I got the Bulldogs. I think I just, man, until I can see anything coming out of the Rabbitohs, they just on and off the field. They've got big problems. I think the Doggies will take a shit ton of confidence, even though it was against pretty lousy opposition. Shut out a team, 32 points against the Titans. Um, so Doggies will get the win there. Cowboys, I hope, absolutely pump the Broncos into the earth. Uh, I've got the Sea Eagles again beating the Dragons. Dolphins against the Titans. Unfortunately, yes, hashtag not a true supporter. Uh, the Warriors, unfortunately, I think will get the Knights, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. Hoping I'm wrong. I'm more than happy yeah. to lose that tip. Yeah. Um, Sharkies will bounce back after a terrible, terrible loss um, against the uh, West Tigers, and the Eels will also prove too good. Uh, they were quite good against the Panthers, so yeah, they're going to continue their form. Yeah, we've got the trifecta here. The, um, I've gone for the Roosters over the Panthers as well. So the Roosters seem to be playing really well at the moment. So I've gone the same as Sean. I've gone the Rabbitohs over the Bulldogs. That's just how how many more games can the Rabbitohs lose before they pull something out? Like, and they're they're playing against the Bulldogs too. Did have a good game last week, but man, they've got to pull, turn it around somewhere, don't they? Like, you know, when a Bulldogs or a West Tigers or like, they, they, somewhere, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. So you should see their run. Uh, the run of games after this one. If they don't bag a win here, I think they can go like if they do. Even they do get yeah. one. It looks like they probably go one from six or something. So I think the pressure's on. I'm interested to see who. Well, I haven't seen it, but who they've put in the halves after axing. Um, what was it? They axed their, axed their yes. one of their halves. Yeah, I don't know whether he's back in this week or not. But um, I've got the Cowboys. Cowboys are playing really well. So and the Broncos, I've got a few out. So pick them. Um, sea Eagles. Yeah, over the Dragons. It feels like a bit of a no-brainer, even though the Seagulls lost last week. Titans over the Dolphins, like Sean's has flip of a coin this one, but Titans, I don't know. I just feel they have to have a decent game sooner or later, especially with Desi in the, at the helm. So I've gone for the Knights over the Warriors. Um, I, I do think we can win. You know, I am one of, um, you know, the. it's hard for me to tip against the Knights. I do fall into that category, but I do think we can win. Um, the Sharks over the Raiders, like you said, Link, Sharks are going to bounce back. You know, I just think they had an absolute shocker last week. So, And if they don't, in the head of them, if they play badly this week, then maybe the writing's on the wall. Who knows? Um, Eels, even with Moses out, I think they can clean up the Tigers. So, yeah. Yeah. And Dean Hawkins, mate, is still keeping that half spot for the for the South. So, in case there's any random South supporters in here, yes, you still have Dean Hawkins playing. Right? <laughs> That's, yeah. That's the only yeah. team list news you're going to get from the Rabbitohs here. All right? So. Ever. Very good. Very good. Well, Storky continuing to appease the battlers and and leaving Sean and I high and dry to tip against the Knights. So well, thanks, sure, someone said one of the battlers said in the comments that Sean hasn't picked the Knights all year, but he did. That, I have. I've picked them twice. Not true. Yeah, he picked them in the first round and I he picked, picked them last round week. one and I picked them last week. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. Clear I was up. I was probably one of the few who probably tipped the Knights to beat yeah. the Did you back him against the Cowboys too? No. 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 You said no. No, no, that, was, that was the controversial oh, I, round. That was the first controversial one. Right, that was that yeah. was when we were blasted. Yes. Um, yeah, I tipped us to beat the the Raiders at home, and I tipped us to beat Storm at home. I think we, we all would have at the first round easily, easily, yeah, easily. Yeah. All right, um, all right. Let's move right along, shall we, to out of their league segment. All right, out of our league for this week, few um, few comps are wrapping up this this round. Uh, Lisa Fiola Cup round nine versus Storm at the New South Wales Rugby League Centre of Excellence, which is just right next to a core stadium, at eleven a.m. Tasha Gale Cup round nine against the Bears at the same place at twelve fifteen p.m. Harold Matthews uh, against the Tigers at Leichhardt Oval. Isn't there all that? Controversy at the oh, moment. Yeah. 
around like that. You see the NRL has come out and said that they would potentially look at purchasing Leichhardt to keep it in the game. Uh, That's smart. I don't mind that. Mm. Yeah, with the history of the place it's got. So that would be the – I'm pretty sure that would be the first NRL-owned stadium. I hope that's the case. Like, it is a part of rugby league folklore, old Leichhardt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, I've never been. Every time I've gone to go, something's come up. I can't remember what might have been the birth of a child. I can't remember, but things have come up and I haven't been able to go. I've had tickets purchased and it's like, can't go. Um, so, yeah, if if Leichhardt's going, going. I tell you, I tell you what, it's, it's all the news at the moment is stadiums, like with Brisbane hosting the fucking Olympics. That's just, just oh, absolute stadium. shit, too. Another shit show. Oh, what stadium God. was it last year? Was it the year before? One of them had asbestos in the um in the hill. Rookie. Yeah. 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 Rookie yeah. with asbestos in the hill. Uh, yeah. SG Ball, round nine, again, uh, round nine against the Balmain Tigers as well at Leichhardt Oval. At 2.30, and then we go over to the Jersey Flake against the Warriors Go Media, Go Media Stadium at 11.30 a.m. The Knights are fourth. They're doing pretty well in Jersey Flake at the moment. Uh, Warriors are sitting in 14th, and then New South Wales Cup also against the Warriors at Go Media Stadium at 1.20. You can watch this one this week on New South Wales Rugby League TV if you've got it. Um I think you get 14 days free when you first sign up, and then it's what is it? It's like six dollars a month. Yeah, highly enough after that. Give, give it a go, battlers. Truly, yeah. For this one, just go in because you know there's never been more sort of headlines around, you know, your will prices and your jacker hates. Like so many questions regarding key players. Yeah. Sign up, get your free trial, tune in at 120. All right. Yeah. You might yep. be pleasantly then, surprised. You might be well worth it. And then come Sunday night, we can all sit there and. We can have a conversation about the halves and the front rowers should have um, Brody Jones been given a go over X and X. Uh, anyway, the Knights are sitting in ninth in New South Wales Cup. The Warriors are 12th. That is it for we out of our three, league. Um, we got the trifecta last week, didn't we, in all three? We the did. Jersey flag, New South Wales. Yeah, let's hope all we do three that again. All three grades got the win. Would be yep. nice. Hey, oh, an OG battler, Lockie Drummond. Good to see you back in here, pal. Yes. Um, speaking of the big fellow, William de Courty. Yeah, good game. To the Jersey Fleet for the second week running. So the yep. big fellow, mate, that clip has just gone absolutely fucking viral. Yep. How many mate, plays has it got from us? Uh, we... Just under one and a half million. That is insane. Yep. And all the other ones started jumping in. They saw this and went, oh, shit, the Knights and New South Wales Cup. Like, shit, we better play it. Fox, yeah. everyone started jumping in on it. Um, but, yeah. You saw it here first, I've, Battlers. You saw I, it I, I said it before that. I said it. When did I go out to Cessnock to watch them? I think it might have been second or third round of SG uh, Ball. Uh, um, second. I got a feeling it was second. It was second two, round. And he had a massive three. game out there at Cessnock. And I came away saying, I wouldn't be surprised if our our um, centers in a couple of years' time, left center is Bradman Best and right center is Wilson Corsi. I would love to see that. That would be massive. So yeah. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we head that way. I'd hate to see him go to another club. Mm. Mm. Yep, definitely. No, that was uh, that was very good. Big viral video, that one. All right, very good. Well, Battlers, you all have your burning questions just ready to be extinguished. So here we are, ready for you. Let's get into some Q&A. Let's do it, boys. Okay, Battlers, get those questions pumping in. So... To give you a bit of time to get some questions up and running, I'm going to ask one a bit of a throwaway question. But um, boys and battlers, the red and blue aside, out of every team in the competition, what's your favourite colour combination? Raiders. All the Raiders. Raiders? Yeah. Just internationally, man, there's not another sports team on the planet that has that lime, iconic lime green. I'm yet to find one. That's true. It's, it's, it's iconic. It just sticks see. out, man. It's just I, – I don't know. Forgive me if there's there is one somewhere – but that that you know they've drifted away from it in past. They gone that darker green. Yeah, that, that, they did. That, um, what year not, was that? That nineties green, lime green, yeah. the white, the the bit of blue in that, mate. Yeah, sign me up to that. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I my favorite color is green. So 
Um, that's probably probably why they they probably would be my second team. I I did have a bit of a soft spot for them growing up, especially in the old days where they had the lime green and then the blue and white stripes yeah. on the arms, like that. Yeah. Kind of, what's that old saying? Blue and green should never be seen, but for some is, reason on is it blue, blue and green with yeah. some only blue and green, but with something in between or something. I can't remember. I can't remember. I thought, I thought it was blue, and, blue yeah. and green should never be seen. I thought it was that, but mate, I used to love that color combination. Um, my Philly Eagles are midnight green, but yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. Raiders. What about you, Storky? I like the Bears color. I'm a sucker for it. not just with it's the Falcons, which is actually ironically one of the reasons I chose to follow the Falcons in the NFL. But I do like the your good old combination of black and red. I don't know. I always have, even back in the day. You know when I. Had an old car that I was doing up in the interior. I just had it all black and red. I just like that combination of black and it's red. It's funny you mentioned, of white him. you mentioned colors. You know, something has always bugged the shit out of me is when the Titans came in, they were allowed to have essentially the same colors as Parramatta. That irked me so much is you've mm. only, at that point, what do we have, 16 teams? They were the 16 teams. Like You're telling me out of all the color combinations there are, there's only 16 that are taken. You're going to go with this? Yeah. It's like there's so many cooler combos you could have come up with, and they just go, oh, no. It's we'll surprising. Go they look to the NFL so much, it's come out that they clearly do with so many things. Why do they look to them for certain colors? Because there's teams over there that have colors that we haven't even touched on yet, like color yeah. combinations. Well, so, that's why I like that um that Wellington Orcas bid that was last year or whatever yeah. it was because they had the midnight green of the Philly Eagles, and it was just, yeah, yeah, back in the that's not done over here. So it was just interesting. I always yeah. wish the Titans went, you know, the um, like the Florida Gators or like the, yeah. the Knicks, where it's like the blue and the orange. Yeah. I just think for a town, don't you? Or it's, even it's, Miami it's, 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 very, it's very, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of Florida, yeah, Miami vibe. Yeah. I don't I know. Man, I think one of the most popular teams in the NFL, the Raiders, the silver and the black. Like I know the Giants, when the Gold Coast Giants first come in for any battlers that remember the Gold Coast Giants, mm. they had that gray, silvery, white and black combo, but. They've been gone for ages. They haven't used that for ages. That's another one a team could use as well. So there's so many combinations. Um, we've got um, where he said, uh, I forgot where he said it, but someone mentioned in here that Gold Coast went with that color because of the beach, the sun, and the sand. Oh, I, I get that, but it's like surely someone in the Different NRL shades. can go, yeah, oh, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like that, like the, the that Miami feel. Um, yeah. I just and same with the go look at the Florida Gators kit. I fucking looked at that and went, fuck. I wish the the Titans ran with that. Did you watch just, that doco, the doco on the Gators? No, I haven't yet. No, it's, on yeah. it's on my list. I have good. to watch that one. Yeah, I wish they'd rent with those colors. I just, I, I get that. I've been told that's why. But and a fun fact for you, Battlers, did you know? Did you? I love fucking telling us the Broncos supporters that the Broncos tried to lodge the colors red and blue, but were mm. beaten by us. They wanted those colors because when you mix red and blue together, they make maroon, which is their state color. So um, yeah, we got one up on the uh, the Broncos there. Purple. Doesn't red and blue make purple? I read that in a book, mate. I'm just going to roll it up. That's what the book said. <laughs> what was that up? <laughs> I read it in a book. <laughs> well, that, um, like smart, 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 smart people write it. books, so I'm, I'm going to have to go back and watch Play School, obviously. Uh, the the dodgeball quote from Link. I love it. Read it in a book. But, read yeah. in a book, mate. So, uh, yeah, must yeah. be true if it's written in a book. The Dolphins so, is the uh, weird one. You'd think the Dolphins, like I know they can't change their colors. They've been the same colors for a long time, but you would think the Dolphins coming in would yeah, be now you like a it. blue color. And apparently they were. You see those mock-up jerseys when the Dolphins, yeah. I don't know, they must have made a bid, and they were the You're right. Colors. No, so, they, they, their original one did have orange. It had blue and the orange. They were more like the Gators. The, the yeah. original Gold Coast Dolphins before they knocked it back. Yeah, true. You're right, yeah. actually. But yeah, yeah, when yeah. you say that now, that the Dolphins are coming and they're red and white, but they kind of got that San Fran gold sort of in the mix. I don't mind it too much. Yeah. yeah. Did okay. you see? Um, sorry, Stoggy, just before yeah. you jumped into this question, did you see that um, San Francisco have inquired about purchasing a team? Yeah, the owner wants to get in on it. A eh? the owner wants to get in on the NRL. I like that. Oh, mm. that's Hey, did you yeah. see too the NFL banning hip drops? Yes. How good's that? They've yeah. we're yeah. leading the way for once. I know they've they've sort of collaborated and 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 asked opinions on it. So 
They apparently they've blown up about it. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, they, mate, the hip drop. You do a hip drop on your quarterback who's worth millions and millions of dollars. That, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I thought they'd be usually they're they're sort of the pioneers of stuff, and we follow them. But it's good to see like we're we're ahead of them in some regard in player welfare. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Uh, but um, Elliot, Elliot Coombe here has said, um, do you think it's fair how Melbourne have three Queensland slash New South Wales Cup affiliated teams? Um, I know they will need support seeing there's not many juniors in Melbourne, but still, you guys think it's I, fair? I, I think they need it, mate. There's just, unfortunately, the resources and the infrastructure just isn't there in Melbourne. And let's be honest, like the whole purpose of putting the storm in Victoria was to have some sort of rugby league influence there. Yeah, and is it is it fair? Probably not, man. But unfortunately, life isn't fair, and you've got to. Otherwise, you know, we talked. What when, when did we talk about? It? If if Craig Bellamy and Co. hadn't come in and just let's be honest, probably run the the best sporting organization in Australia, probably period for the longest period of time. Do we even have a Melbourne Storm anymore? Like, if they're just this irrelevant team that oh mate, if they if they were for a year, powerhouse they are, if they were terrible and lost. Come last or near near last every year. That's a good, mate. Question. They'd be the joke Probably of the league. Not. They're like, why are we even Victoria? No one cares yeah. about them. They constantly lose. No one's going to yeah. go down there and play for them. So, unfortunately, man, I think you do. I think for the greater good of the game, they're going to kind of need those. Isn't it quite? Isn't it? What's the tax that um, AF, AFL clubs get for players going to Sydney? Isn't there a little bit of a? Don't they get a bit of a bump if you're if, if, to go play in Sydney? Don't you get yeah, isn't right. exemptions? Yeah, yeah, I have heard that as the um AFL to get players out of no, I don't, I'm not 100 sure, but yeah, I have heard something like that. But um, I'm sure they, they got something to lure players from Victoria. They get yeah, yeah it's they get X amount. Of Sydney were of Sydney didn't originate the Swans didn't originate in Sydney. They were um what were the Bloods the South yeah South Melbourne I think it was unless I'm having a shocker. But yeah, the South Melbourne and they moved up. But what a cool name! Why nice wouldn't you keep style. the Sydney Bloods? Damn, that would have well, been still, that's, that's like their nickname. They're still nicknamed as the Bloods. They were always the Swans, or as far as I'm aware. They were the Swans when they were down there. But yeah, the Bloods are just their nickname. They still get called the Bloods. So Blood Swans. Just yeah. Swans with blood and fangs and shit. Yeah, it's interesting when they play the Crips. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I actually look like a bit of a Crip tonight. <laughs> Can you give us a Crip, crip shuffle? tonight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dad jokes, but no, uh, that's yeah. good. Uh, we'll pay that one. A couple, couple of dads in front of the microphone, <laughs> anyway. Okay, let's move on. Um, Mike Allen, do you fellas um, hear how we? Oh, okay. Do you fellas hear how we are one of five teams considered for the last three spots for Vegas with Storm, Warriors, Raiders, Cowboys, mm. and Dolphins? Yeah, well, yeah, a little bit of inside information when we went to when you came down lincoln last year and we went along the captain's run we were there with frank barrett he was mm. telling us that the knights are in with a huge chance to go this year and that was that was captain's run last year for the was that the sharks it was the sharks game? Sh- sharky's game yeah sharks yep. game so that was the second last home game and we were getting told by the media manager for the Knights that we'll pretty much a shoe in then. Yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we're heading to Vegas next year. I really well, I know would. Phil Gardner was pretty staunch, and we put a post out too saying, "Would you be Would you be willing for the Knights to omit or full, full go a, a home game at McDonald Jones mm. Stadium if it meant they could go play in Vegas?" And it was an absolute resounding, "Absolutely fucking not. Do not give yeah. up a home as long game." As it's not a I don't think the NRL would give up our home game. We get too many fans through the gate to a home game. We had the biggest crowd last week behind the um, Roosters and Rabbitohs game, which was like a, you know, that's like a blood match. You know, they hate each other, those clubs. So, yeah, we had the highest sets. They're not going to give away something like that. It's huge yeah, every, every year we usually finish in the top three. Yeah. So I know Phil Gardner came out and he goes, look, absolutely, we want to get over there, but... He reassured, like it's not going to be the expense of giving up a home game. We're not. If push came to shove, though, like because that was before, um, that was before. Obviously, they went over to Vegas and just the, just you know, the performance all the teams put on, the spotlight that was put on all those teams, like it's huge. It's huge. You, you, every club would love that. So, if, you know, I guarantee that shove. I'd love to see the uptick in memberships. If there was some way to quantify just being in Vegas and seeing a team that you might have been a member of. But how many say like Broncos, because cool, they cracked 50,000 members. I wonder mm-hmm. how much of that was to do with the Vegas buzz. They need you know overseas. I mean? like, someone, one of the battlers mentioned last week, um, 
I think it was um, a good friend, well, what's his name, Jared, the guy over in Berlin. Um, yeah, he said that he wishes they had um, international memberships. You know, obviously you're not going to be making it at the game. It's a bit of a distance. Mm. But um, yeah, at least you can still be a part of the club, you know, maybe get something mailed to, or emailed to you. I've said the same thing with NFL, and I know like we've spoken about it. I'd love to be a Falcons member. I'm not getting there any games, but I'd love to be you know, a member and, you know, get something yeah. to support the team. I don't know why um, they don't look at things like that. So... But yeah, it'd be interesting to see how many, I've often thought this since the Vegas round, how many Americans have caught on and are still watching. Like Mate, you, you jump you so, jump yeah. in the comment sections. I've seen quite a few Americans comment on things. So I, I don't know. I think I, I, I think there's early days, but I think we look back in five, 10 years and I think, I think we get, look, are we going to convert the whole of the US? Absolutely not. Yeah. But I think you'll see, I think you'll start to see some interest. I'm, I'm positive yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay. This I think we discussed this a little bit on um on the Sunday show, but um Adrian uh, Magale said, How would you describe Braley's return and would you say it was impactful? On top of that, like we, you know, Phoenix still played well last week, but you know, there was a bit of talk that he didn't, you know, have his best game. How many weeks do you think if um if Phoenix doesn't have, you know, better games, do you think it is before we see Braley? Do you just think it's inevitable that Braley starts the game and sooner or later it's just going to switch yeah i think i think um as much as collectively the three of us i know we're more probably phoenix fans um yeah i I think we're going to see brails in that starting spot before we know it he was on target Um, last week well i'll 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 read out his, his stats from last week he's played 27 minutes four runs for 19 meters Nine post contact, uh, 20 tackles, one missed. Yeah. And a, uh, a thing that, you know, the stats won't tell you is just his delivery out of dummy half. Yeah. Like Phoenix isn't bad at it by any means. But as soon as Braley came on, just the speed that those balls were getting to the halves and to the front row, it was just, I know, something that we ha- obviously haven't seen for a while. So I, I think he will be starting before too long and then Phoenix will come on and he'll be that impact. Well, would you see more though with Phoenix play more in the lock position? Because, you know, we've seen with he's given um, Elliot a maybe. spell and then they chuck Crossland in there. Maybe, maybe a maybe. bit of both. Like maybe yeah. they could, you know, two birds, one stone. You know, Brails might come off or other way around. Like it could be an Elliot come off for, for five minutes or so that he'll run in and, fill in at lock and then Braley will go off for a break and then he'll go mm-hmm. from lock into dummy half and someone will come in and be a bit of a committee lock. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think we might see a bit more of a rotation from Phoenix. Cause so cast, your mind back. cast your mind's back to when Braley, you know, had some consistent games for us, you know, back in the fifties. No, just kidding. No, um, a few seasons ago, like he was and an we'll, 80 minute player, wasn't he? He like played. Oh, yeah. 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 And we we're calling him the machine. We, oh, um, he, mate, he, he just needs to stay fit because if he stays fit, he is a machine. He was, you know, we're not going to give him that name for no reason. So, yeah, like he just needs to stay fit. Just got to but... stay on the stay on the park. He he never really had. He never had a. What did I do? I went I went through his games he had played, and he didn't have a serious injury until he came to us. Hmm. So yeah, before so coming to us, he didn't have a a season where he had you know missed six twelve games. Until he didn't, came here, so. didn't, have a, didn't have a curse on him. Didn't have the hooker curse until, yeah. until Newcastle. It was good, mate. It was like I can think I can speak for all of us. It was great seeing him back out there. All the nights, fan. It was great seeing him back out there when they interviewed him after the game, and he's saying, "I forgot how tough this game was, but mate, he, he did well. Yeah, he, did he well played well, really man. well. He's an yeah. absolute pro, man. It won't take him too long. As I said, the big thing is staying fit. Guy stays fit, mate. After a month, he'll be a totally different player. Yeah, you know, getting that match fitness into him. Get the getting the miles under the legs. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Maybe maybe we see Crossland develop more if we see him playing a bit more lock. Because the one thing you know, we 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 saw a great game out of Adam Elliott um, against the Cowboys. He was a knighted player and, and rightly so. But you want to see that consistently. Like he, he had an up, but then you know last week a couple of errors crept into his game. So until he's like a fucking uber consistent kind of lock forward, um, yeah. maybe maybe. Crossland will help that a bit too in the middle. So, yeah. Okay. Let's take a few more in depth questions tonight. This is what we like about it. Yeah, it's good. Um, okay. So, we've got Daniel um, Connors here said, Did Jack Black get named for the Warriors this week? So, a bit of a. Did you see that? 
Well, he's he got the interviewed video. by the Panthers too. He was in a I oh, saw him in the Panthers kit too. So yeah, he's doing the. I saw, him, I saw the video where he's like got the Warriors and he goes up to us and like throws a kick at the camera or something. But um, <laughs> yeah, Scott yeah. Scott Sorensen was sitting down interviewing with him and he had a Panthers jersey on too. Yeah, yeah, so, right on. yeah. So I don't know what that's. He's about. one of those characters. I think he's good value, but he's one of those. Um, yeah, you know, like Jim Carrey. A lot of people like when he first came out liked him. A lot of people didn't like him. I think there's a bit split. How can him. you not that's like Jim Carrey? Some people yeah. just don't, you know. It's that thing. And Mr. No. Bean. Some people, you know, some people love Mr. Bean. Seinfeld. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It's these type of things. The really great like comedians and funny people are always going to be split. Yeah, they're always going to be divisive. Mm. It's just yeah, like, knighted. Some people love it. Some people hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Maybe a little bit more of one than the other. <laughs> Won't tell um, you which one. <laughs> okay. George Todd said, um, uh, you have to feel sorry for the Warriors. They're on their third choice fullback. <laughs> not, not a bad choice. choice. Not, 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 week, when anyway. it's, not when it's Roger. Yeah. Shit, I, don't, I don't feel sorry for him one bit. It's third not... choice fullback and it's fucking Roger. Yeah. Now, who's our third choice fullback? Davey Armstrong. I've got like, a funny feeling there might be a bit of sarcasm, bit of sarcasm in this one from George. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think so as well. Tongue yeah. and thick, as we like to say. Um, okay, here's one for me. In Tongue usual. in face, if you're Lincoln. Tongue in face. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, is Will, is Will we're playing fullback for him? Is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Justin here said, "Hey, Sean and Stocky, any chance of seeing you guys at a Maitland Pickers game when the local league starts up?" Yes, funny, we'll try to get one. I haven't been to a picket, or I don't think I've ever been to one, if not for a long time. But um, I actually went down the other day to my local club. It's not the same league, but went down to the old Beresfield or Thornton Beresfield Bears. Um, Matty Crocker actually played for um for the or Crocker, however you say it. I always get them mixed up. He actually played for the Thornton Beresfield Bears. That's the team I played for. I went down there and going to try and get to a few games this year. Bought a hat and a, a hoodie and stuff. But um, as far as the pickers, yeah, it's just making time. Sean and I hook up so we can go up there. Yeah, I've been speaking to the, I think she's the secu- secretary of the pickers, Jane. Um, can't remember now. I'd have to go back through my emails because um, I've been asking for a jersey off them for a while. Um, yeah, my plan is to try and get to as many pickers home games as I can this year. And I'll Talking try about great colours too, man. Man. Oh, oh, mate, man. I love pickers' colours. They are great colours. Green, yeah. black and white. It's a... It's such such a good. When you say it out loud, it doesn't sound right. Green no, it doesn't. Color. It does work, man. It's a yeah, especially really especially well. in the Chevron, especially in the V jersey they have yeah. at the moment. It's it's so good. Some colors going back to colors. I guess we already talked about this, but someone mentioned last week when we were talking about what we'd like our heritage jersey to be, and um, it didn't come in until we went off the air. But he said that he wouldn't mind going back to the original Newcastle rep colors, the green, white, and the brown, and. Might not sound great together, but I'd be up for that. I don't mind that color combination. You know, a few of the teams have done. I know the Jets have done that a few times, and I don't even know. You know what I'd love for the NRL to to bring in? You know, we got these rounds for everything. We just saw a multicultural round. I don't know how we hadn't really spoken about it until right now. But um, what if there was like a, a a round where they obviously pay respects to their junior clubs that they played for? And everyone wore their juniors socks. I swear they used to do yeah, that. Didn't they? Yeah, I thought they did that at once. I, I swear I, they I did. Know. There was one game where they had heaps of everyone had different socks on. So that's the only conclusion I you can come away. That, that was like a that was that um that was for like a charity thing. Everyone was that like was a weird sock like, day. Everyone was just wearing weird. Yeah, socks that was just a weird sock day. But I'd like to see one where everyone wears their juniors socks. Yeah. So everyone just there we go. it'll be a mix match of. All these different socks running yeah. around the park, but you'd still have your club shorts and yeah. jerseys on. Yeah, I think that'd be oh, pretty that. cool. That'd be cool. Speaking like, of imagine um, all the young kids out there, like fuck, Kalen Pong is wearing my socks. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Give Instead of the that. other way around, I'm I'm wearing Kalen Ponga's socks. It's the other way around. I, yeah. I think I think I think a lot of people get kick out of it. Yeah, it yeah. would be cool. Um, uh, speaking of like, well, we touched on. You know the um the pickers and the and the Thornton Bears, but um Adam has asked you, Link. Um, we be going to any Jets games? I know you used to be like burrowed in like a tick with them. You used to be really involved, but you um, used to do quite a bit of work. They've um, yeah. yeah, they they they've look. There's some big fucking. I've I've still got some people that um in in and around the Jets, and they are just. Yeah, they're pretty poorly run a club. I used to bash my head against a fucking wall. Just is, trying to do certain things. Their, their social media is just terrible. 
They are um, the problem is, man. You can't believe it. Like it astounds me. Ipswich is such a huge rugby league town. Like m- the the largest portion of Broncos members live in Ipswich. That's their bread and butter. That's why they're so against an Ipswich, another Southeast Queensland slash Ipswich team coming in because they do not want that membership based compromise. But you never know when the Jets are playing. You just never know. It's 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 it, it amazes you how little you hear from the Ipswich Jets. And I've been telling them this for years. And I tried to do a little bit of stuff on socials. Like what I do with the night, I was trying to get across with them. It just, force it wasn't working. And um, it was just, yeah. So you're not in the family anymore. It's like the mob. You're not in the family anymore. So that was oh, they, they, they had some. Yeah, they, had, out on link. they had a job going in. Pete guys were getting me going, mate, do it. Go be the social media guy and all that stuff. I was like, oh, I don't know. But um, I, I, I want to get down to some games. Um, What's what about the old fall from grace? Because remember, a few years ago, there was the old threat that Newcastle weren't doing well financially. We mm. might ship them up to Ip- Ipswich. Remember oh, that? Well, I, that I, was, I, yeah, that was never going to happen. But yeah, first, we did it first hand, so, Lincoln um, Lincoln would have been creaming his jeans here and there. Right, my phone <laughs> lit up. So what it was, Stephen Johnson, who's the chairman for the Jets, he told me, he goes, mate, it was all bullshit. Completely, I'm telling. This is no word of a lie. Um, the all he wanted, he because he's been back like for decades back with Artie Beats and trying to get the Western Corridor Ipswich bid going. He goes, all I wanted was to get Ipswich in the headlines for a first grade rugby league team. So he leaked. Yes. The, the, the Knights are looking to come up to Ipswich to relocate. So it's all horseshit. I fabricated the whole thing. And f- funnily enough, magic round 2019, before we switched our logo, I bumped into to Stephen and he goes, oh, I actually had uh, breakfast with uh, Phil Gardner this morning, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, prick. I wish I got invited. But anyways, he goes, mate, I'm telling you now, you're the first bloke I'm going to tell this to. Not many know. The Knights are changing their logo around. And I said, fucking bullshit. He was half t- half pissed. I thought he was having a lend to me here. This is months before they announced it. He goes, I'm telling you, mate, they're going to swap their logo around. I said, whatever, mate. And lo and behold, I messaged him. I said, you old bastard, you fucking told me. So I thought he was pulling my leg. So he had a few under his belt. He's trying to tell you that it's going to be looking oh, up. Mm. Mate, he's slurring. He's got his hand against the wall. Hey, Link. Back you thought he was telling you an old Wilma. Oh, yeah. 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 Wilma Dickfit. Yeah, he was pulling a Wilma Dickfit for sure. So <laughs> That sounds, sounds <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Just go and chop that into a reel. Yeah, he was playing that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, boys, let's get one last question. It's a bit of a fun one. Um, Cameron's asked it a f- couple of times here, so to wrap it up. Um, Cameron has asked, are you guys watching WrestleMania in a few weeks? Yeah, Sean and I are big wrestler fans. We've tried to convert Link a few times, but um, we've been fans for a long time, since so back in the There's day. My toys, I, I hide behind yeah. them because I didn't I didn't want to show my wrestling. I've got fucking box loads full of old wrestling figures and shit. Yeah, I constantly, I love all the, I love the old school stuff a bit more. I what love that Dark Side of the Ring series and everything. I'm full on into that. But um, yeah, we still watch it. WWE, AEW, a little bit of TNA, all that type of stuff. But yes, we yeah. will be watching it. It's Man, more it's about hard the to keep up these it? days, all yeah. the shows. Do you know what I have yeah, been watching, boys? Best. And it has taken me back in some of the battlers. Mud wrestling. Millennial battlers. X-Men 97. Oh my God. You guys I used to that, love that show originally. I haven't oh, seen the new yeah. one. Is it just pretty like good. exactly the same and they've just redone it or is it like a continuation? Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, it's pretty much bang on, brother. It's 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 fucking great. Yeah. So yeah, for all I the other, other millennials. Back in the day. That's that's yeah. a really good, yeah. Anyone that yeah loves that type of stuff, it's definitely worth a watch. It, it's good. It's good. Oh, mate, when that iconic intro music comes on, oh, I feel like a kid all over again. So good. Yeah. <laughs> one of the best songs. Have you yeah. seen um, Street Sharks toys and everything coming back? Yes. Oh, are they? Mate, you can get the original yes. ones. They're worth a mint now. No, yeah. they're, they're bringing out all new um, Street Sharks stuff. Love Street Sharks. Yeah, expect a Street Sharks movie. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I still love great. a trip down memory lane and watching the old cartoons. And you're talking, you're talking last week about songs you would listen to on your debut. Brother, just hook me into the X Men theme song and have that shit on repeat. I'll fucking run out there like Wolverine, just make a billion tackles. <laughs> Did you have a favorite Street Shark character? Ripster. Ripster. The main one. I, I didn't really. Hey, the great, the the great light. I forget his name. Jab. The, yeah, right. Yeah, Jab. The metal one. Streak, Slamu, Ripster. Do you remember the episode um, where there was um, a street shark? It's like a guy that he was in a band or something, some rock yeah. band or something, and he turns into a street shark. Yep. Yeah. 
one thing Good I chat. didn't think we'd be talking about. And um, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm not there you go. So street sharks. I love it. What street a note to end it on the street sharks. Yeah. But um, all right, let's do it, boys. Cue the music. It's not X Men music, unfortunately, but we're gonna cue music. <laughs> um, all right, if you haven't done so already, please, pretty please, like, subscribe, follow on all social media platforms. Leave us a review. Get those reviews going, Battlers. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Also, massive shout out to our major sponsor, lgbmarine.com.au. Support the sponsors that support us. Boys, that is it for us this week. Don't just have a good night. Have a Newcastle night. Join the Knighted community at thenighted.com.au and on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Knighted Podcast. Until next time. Good night.